Okay, hi. Um, in this session, uh, Alicia Walsh is going to talk to us about some of the principles and the technologies involved in 3D imaging um, in various methods for 3D, um, 3D imaging and scanning. So go ahead, Alicia. Right. Yes, thank you. Um, yep. So like Gavin mentioned, we're going to be talking about the principles and methods of um, 3D scanning and imaging today. Um, so starting out with the two main principles that go into how 3D scanning works, um, and then followed by um, the methods behind laser scanning, structure light scanning, CT scanning, and finally photogrammetry. So starting off with the first principle of 3D scanning, um, time of flight works by determining the surface depth of an object um, by measuring the time that it takes for the sensor to send a signal to the object and then back again. And this sensor can be uh, in the form of a light or a laser. And it typically is typically used to cover large areas and can measure the distance of um, 10,000 to 100,000 points every second. So it's ideal for aerial scanning or for LIDAR. Um, However, since it covers large distances, um, its accuracy can be low. So, uh, and it's often ineffective in cloudy environments or with transparent objects, um, which is a common theme um, throughout all of the uh, 3D imaging methods. Um, and the second principle is the triangulation principle. And this is more suited to our purposes for this course. Um, since it's used for smaller objects. So this is what we're gonna be talking about going forward. Um, it consists of three main elements, um, a sensor, a camera, and an object being scanned. And together they form uh, sort of a triangle, hence the name. So in laser scanning, for instance, the laser is projected onto the object while the sensor or the camera measures the distance that the laser stretches to reach the object. And it also captures how the laser moves along the object as the object rotates. So the um, scanner collects reference points on the object, um, which helps it determine the object's position. And then these data points are converted into a point cloud. So those are the two main principles. Um, so let's talk about the 3D methods um, that use it. So starting with 3D laser scanning, this is a non-contact and non-destructive technology that digitally captures the shape of physical objects using laser beams. And this can actually use both the time of flight and the triangulation principles. Um, but as I mentioned, we're just gonna be focusing on triangulation. So through the camera, the sensor analyzes the distance and the deformation of the laser as it is emitted onto the object. Um, and then the, it collects reference points and converts them into point clouds. And we're gonna be talking more about point clouds later on and meshes and so on. Um, since laser scanning can be used for both close range and aerial documentation, it can be highly versatile in its application. And in close range, it can also provide reliable measurements. Um, so objects can be easily measured digitally and are to scale. Um, the downsides to laser scanning, however, are that um, it sometimes has difficulties in uh, brightly lit environments. Um, it can be difficult capturing surfaces with variable, de um, variable depths. Um, so the point of laser scanning is to capture surface variations. But when you have an object such as the ceramic pot you see in the model here, um, I'll play it again. The, um, the laser is very good at reading the exterior of the vessel, but it has problems reaching too far into the pot. Um, so it wasn't able, able to capture the inner surface. So structured light scanning is another triangulation-based 3D scanning method, um, which uses a camera and a projection unit. Um, it's similar to laser scanning, except that the sensor projects a known light pattern onto the object. 
and the camera captures how the light pattern becomes distorted as it moves along. Um, since there are usually more light sources, um, which are of higher complexity than laser beams, it can produce a more dense point cloud, um, giving the model a higher resolution. They can usually also have uh, faster processing times. Um, however, this is quite variable depending on the type of scanner that you have. Um, and as with laser scanning, it can be difficult in um, outdoors or brightly lit spaces um, because the light is competing with the surrounding light. And it also has difficulty scanning large objects. Um, but again, this is up to the particular scanner. So the one that I'm using in this photo, for instance, um, is not made for an object that big, um, since you have to keep it at a constant distance from the object as you move around. Um, you have to do this manually, so it can become quite difficult. Um, and the scanner is also quite expensive. Um, it can reach up to 20,000 euros. So CT scanning is a bit different from laser and structured light because it consists of taking a series of 2D photos using x-rays, um, which are then superimposed to form a 3D model. And CT scanning is able to scan not only the external part of an object, but also its internal surface, making it a very popular option for seeing inside um, certain archaeological material non-invasively. Um, it can also provide very high resolution and has diverse applications um, from medicine to cultural heritage. However, it is the most um, expensive 3D imaging option. And other downsides are that there are high risks of x-ray exposure. Um, you need, usually need a specialized technician to run the machine and you the machine needs to be big enough to fit the entire object inside. And finally, we have photogrammetry. Um, in photogrammetry, point clouds are constructed from digital photographs um, by capturing different but overlapping views of the object. The number of photos um, you take vary on the size and the complexity of the object, um, but also on how high of a quality um, 3D model that you're aiming for. And these photos are imported into software and undergo um, a workflow starting with aligning the photos um, to create a sparse cloud and finishing with applying the texture on top of the mesh. And we're going to go into greater detail um, about this process um, a bit later on. So if this seems a bit rushed right now, don't worry. And this method can be used in close range and um, aerial. So uh, close range uses a handheld camera such as a DSLR or your phone um, with a fixed focal length. Um, and yeah, it's great for capturing smaller objects such as artifacts. Um, and aerial photogrammetry uses aerial images captured by satellite, aircraft, or by drone. Um, and this is used for collecting images of buildings, um, structures, or terrain. And photogrammetry is usually the most affordable method of 3D imaging, um, as the cost is related to the type of camera that you're using, um, as well as your computer and the software that you choose. And it also allows diversity in 3D recording and captures the texture surface um, very well thanks to the um, high resolution 2D images that you're taking. The downsides to this are that it requires accurate image capturing in the first stage. Um, and this has to be done manually and is most prone to human error. It also requires a computer with a good processor um, because depending on the amount of photos that you have and the quality settings that you choose, um, it can use up a lot of your computer's CPU and RAM. And um, sometimes it can end up taking like days to process um, if your computer doesn't meet the minimum requirements. Um, but since photogrammetry is the most accessible 3D recording method to everyone, um, we're going to be focusing a lot on this in the next few days. Um, and we'll show you how to take photos both inside and outside 
and how the software processes your images to create a 3D model. Great. So that is what I have on 3D imaging and scanning. Great. Thanks, Alicia. Um, that's a really useful introduction, um, and we'll um, we'll look in more detail at some of those some of those things in in future videos. Thank you.